The title of my sermonette is The, the Turning Point. There are some historical events, when analyzed, had a, a turning point, what you call a turning point, a point from which the inevitable result, uh, inevitable situation resulted. For example, the First World War. I went online on Google and uh, read about this, and this is what it says about the First World War. It says the direct cause of World War I was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand on 28th of June, 1914. However, historians feel that a number of factors contributed to the rivalry between the great powers that allowed World War I, such, uh, such as a, a wide-scale war to break out. So they kind of pinpointed the turning point to the assassination of this man, which eventually led to the cause of World War I. Once that assassination took place, of course, you know, <laughs> inevitably, the war broke out and it was really destructive to the world. Now, I personally believe that there was a turning point in regards to the downfall of the United States by the Supreme Court decision made recently in regards to same-sex marriage, which goes both contrary to the U.S. Constitution, and of course they just ignored the Constitution, and the Bible, which defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. There's no question about that. I'd like to turn to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 31. In Ephesians 5, 31, it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So there's no question from a biblical point of view as to what a marriage is. And also, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, in Genesis 2, Beginning in verse 22, we'll read verses 22 to 24. It says, Genesis 2, verse 22, Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And in verse 24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So now, ironically, if you speak out against same-sex marriage as being a sin and, about, and a perversion, you can be prosecuted for breaking the law. It's just unbelievable. And this is only the tip of the iceberg when you think about it. What's next? I mean, what's the real agenda here? The law changed uh, so that a person could marry an animal? I mean, that's probably next in line on their agenda. Marry their pets? I think the agenda is what they want to remove is the lawful, age of consensual sex. That's probably the ultimate uh, aim here, which would mean you could not be prosecuted for being a pedophile. And of course, coming along with that would be you could marry any, anything, anything, you know, living, which is kind of ridiculous. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it go in that direction because of this change in the law. Now, the nation can no longer be called Christian, a Christian nation, since the Bible clearly condemns what the Supreme Court has made legal. It's unbelievable. You know you're, you know you're in trouble when a small minority of perverts, which it amounts to, can change the law for the whole nation. It's a small minority that pushed this agenda forward, and yet it is now the law. And, you know... It's, it's all aimed about being politically correct 
and uh, it, it's, it's a liberal agenda. It's unbelievable. And of course, if you speak out against it, you're called a sexist and uh, you face all kinds of problems. Let's look at what Paul said about describing the end times that we're living in with great accuracy, I might add, over in the book of Romans, the first chapter. In Romans 1, beginning in verse 18, it says, Romans 1, 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And in verse uh, 19, it says, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Continuing on, For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God and were thankful and were thankful, but nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. In verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So what he's stating here is that they turned to idolatry and making all kinds of idols, which goes against you know, the second commandment. Therefore, God, because of this, God gave them over to uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And going on, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature, and likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the woman buried in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And of course, this perfectly describes what's happened, you know, legally in, uh, in the United States. Same-sex marriage. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in other words, they, they rejected God. They, they didn't want to be told what they're doing is wrong. I mean, the Bible is clear on those things. They didn't want to hear those things. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God that these that those who practice such things are deserving of death, because if you don't repent of any sin, the, the death penalty lies before you, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, this is a perfect description of what's going on in, in, in America, and of course, other nations too around the world. They, they've just turned their back on God, they've rejected Him, and they go into these debased uh, things. Now, the majority may not be practicing or participating in same-sex marriage or lewd sexual acts, but they say, they got this liberal attitude, we'll live and let live, the liberal mindset. You know, the, in other words, they're not appalled by it, they don't speak out against it, they say, well, it, it's love. I mean, you know, love covers a multitude of sins. I mean, it's, it's not love, and of course, God condemns it. They do not condemn sex actions, but approve them. And this is the same condition as Sodom and Gomorrah. If you were not a pervert, you were still not speaking out against it, and you sort of went along with it. <laughs> Look at uh, how bad things were in Sodom. Over in Genesis, the book of Genesis, the uh, 
19th chapter. Genesis 19, and we'll read verses 4 and 5. Genesis 19, and verse 4 says, Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. So it's all the youths and, and the men were there. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who, who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. I mean, that's how bad Sodom and Gomorrah was. I mean, they were, they, if they weren't perverted and twisted, they went along with it. They didn't object to it. There are times when no matter how someone describes something to you or how bad it is, for example, war, Unless you're there, you, you just can't get a full mental picture of what it's really like. In other words, you've got to be there to see what it like, what it's like. And these angels went there to see how bad it was. In other words, get a, a bird's eye view of the situation. Of course, it caused the death and destruction. And everybody was destroyed by God because of uh, their perversion. The angels got a taste of how bad it was. Twisted and perverted things by being there, and, and as a consequence, the whole town and the Gomorrah, the two cities, were destroyed by God. Unfortunately, this country is on its way down. And I believe history will demonstrate that the turning point of this downturn will have been this change in the marriage law. Now, that's not the only problems that beset America to bring its downfall. I mean, look at, for example, the national debt. I was talking to Mr. Link the other day, and the clock was at $18 trillion, and it, there's a clock that keeps adding up every day. And I was looking on Drudge Report about a week ago, and for some reason the clock stopped. Now, they stopped it. Now, I don't know if it's because they're so ashamed of how bad things are, or if it was a technical problem. And I... I was going to go back and check to see if it was on, but that is equal to over $50,000 for every living being in the United States. So if you have a child in the United States, it's got a $50,000 debt attached to it. I mean, that's totally unsustainable. I mean, try living on your credit card indefinitely. It can't be done. You've got to pay those bills off at some time. And between same-sex marriage and the national debt and other issues I'm going to talk about, I mean, you could see the decline of America coming. Also, the use of drugs, both legal and illegal. You know that we're the largest consumer of drugs on a per capita basis in the United States, of legal drugs, but also the largest users of illegal drugs. I mean, half the people are walking around high or, or you know, their minds altered by some form of drugs. I mean, imagine, I mean, it's a horrible situation. The cost of the war. I mean, imagine if they trusted in God and just said, we're not spending another dollar on war. The, the cost of maintaining the army is in the billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in the states to maintain a war, which is one of the causes of why Rome fell. They had an army that was just getting so big that it, just couldn't, it couldn't be sustained. So this is another cause of the, the, you know, the fall of the United States. And another one, I mean, which is really appalling, is abortion. I mean, millions of babies are aborted every year, which in God's eyes is nothing but murder. But you can't speak out against that either, because, you know, it, it, the, the laws are getting so bad, but the only place where you can do it is on the internet now. You, otherwise, you know, you do it from the pulpit, you could, you know, at church somewhere, you could land up in trouble. And not only that, I mean, there's all kinds of murder and mayhem in the cities. I mean, Chicago is one of the most violent cities in the United States. It's murders every, every day and, and twice as many on the weekend. It's just a horrible conditions in, the, in those cities. And also, another cause is, is the pursuit of money and pleasures. I mean, people have put God to the back burner and, and they just want to buy goods. They feel that that's going to fulfill them spiritually, just a pursuit of pleasures and the pursuit of goods. And it, it, it may be temporary, but it's not a permanent 
fulfilling spiritually. I mean, it, it's just an illusion. So when you consider all these things, I mean, I think it's like pushing a snowball up a hill. You know, if you think of the decline of America, you know, and it gets bigger as you get to the top. And yeah, when you get to the top, it starts going down. And you're amazed at two things, how fast it's going down and how big it's getting. And I think we're going to see that effect you know, in the future now as time goes on. It's going to get worse and bigger and worse and bigger. And I was telling Mr. Link, what happens to us as Sabbath keepers when the laws change that Sunday is the official day of worship and it's against the law to keep Saturday? I mean, we're, you're, you're almost forced to go underground, otherwise you'd be arrested. It's just horrible conditions we live in. So things ahead are going to get worse, especially for those commissioned to cry aloud and show my people their sins which God commands us to do. I mean, that command is not watered down because things are getting bad. In fact, it, it's more onus on us to speak out against it and, and warn the people saying there's destruction coming. In fact, you know, going into captivity. But I mean, uh, there's curses involved and attached to breaking God's laws. So we need to be fervently praying to God that his kingdom will come soon because from here on out it's going to get worse. Thank you.